Hello people of the internet, welcome back to my channel. How are you doing? I hope you're doing all right. This isn't just another cup of tea with me video, even though I'm sat in the area that I normally film cup of tea with me videos with, and I indeed do have a cup of tea. It's right here, there it is. But this mug, which just happens to be one of my favorites, is a clue that this video is a little bit different. Because here's the thing, what with everything going on at the moment and where we're at right now in the world, the lockdown and everything, now more than ever, the thing that's helping me out is having projects, things to focus my time and attention on so I'm not just sitting around reading the news and going slightly mad, as Queen once sang. There's probably never been a better time than right now to finally start one particular project I have been wanting to do for years. That project, folks, is to build a model railway. So folks, allow me to welcome you to the Small Train Chronicles. So a little bit of backstory, I had, like a lot of kids I guess, had a model railway when I was little. It was just a massive piece of wood with a big oval circuit on it and some sidings and stations and stuff on it. It was a train set, that's what it was, and it was great fun. I really enjoyed it. After several house moves, that went away as did my interest in model railways and trains in general. And then around 10 years ago, it really came back, and it came back with a vengeance. So much so, that I thought, I'm gonna now build a proper model railway layout. It was gonna be in double O gauge, and it was gonna take up two entire walls of my bedroom. This very room we're sat in right now. That was gonna be quite a big layout, and most importantly, it was gonna be my first full layout. It was too much. It was far too ambitious for me, and it ended up some track went down, some trains did run, but not much went beyond that, and in the end it all got scrapped. Now we're back here ten years later, and in fact this particular layout, this particular model railway project I now want to get into, has been about two or three years in the making. Because let's be honest, any good project like this, especially a model railway, is one that you say you're gonna do for months, maybe years, maybe quite a few years, and then one day you finally actually get round to doing it at last. Many, many ions after saying you would. And I am no different, viewers, but with the current situation that we're in, meaning that we're all going to be spending quite a lot of time indoors looking for things to do right now, we're all kind of looking round for those projects that we've been meaning to do for years and years, and never quite got around to. My model railway build is exactly one of those projects. For my birthday, I was very kindly gifted as present the first part of the build, which is this. It's a rather lovely baseboard kit from scalemodelscenery.co.uk with baseboard construction starting to go down and track looking dangerously close to actually being pinned down and trains actually running. I thought, if I can't show you a layout that I'm building right now, I can show you the trains that will be running on it. My very first N-Gage locomotive I bought with my own money which was the best part of two years ago, almost exactly, it was February 2018, I picked this up for Invicta Model Railways. This is a Class 33 -1 from Dapol. This is in a very 1980s, circa 1990s era, engineer's grey, yellow, Dutch livery. I always liked the Class 33, this felt like a good place to start, and as you'll see in a bit, uh, the kind of 80s into early 90s theme is definitely uh, one of the eras that I'll be pursuing with my layouts. So this one fits in just fine. So the second loco I picked up wasn't quite a loco. It's in fact a diesel multiple unit. In fact, it's this, which is another Dapol model. This is a class 121 bobble car. And I think these are very, very cute indeed. What's useful about these in particular is that this is a train in itself because it's just one coach and it's powered, and it just trundles up and down little branch lines and things like that. For the price of one locomotive, you've got an entire train without having to buy a loco and then a coach or more coaches and stuff. Annoyingly, when I went to film this video the other day, I discovered that this model is missing one of its buffers, which is very annoying and I can't find that, so um, if anyone happens to know where I can pick up a spare buffer for a Dapol Class 121 bubble car, let me know. Hit me up. The next one that I picked up was, well, I didn't actually pick this one up. This was gifted to me for Christmas 2018. It's a Class 47. There it is. Uh, it's my first Graham Farish model as well. I mean, this is absolutely perfect for my layout as well. It's in the correct livery, which is Network Southeast, which Network Southeast was a region of British Railways that was formed in 1980 or 1986. And one of the main time period of my layout, or one of them anyway, will be the late 1980s. I mean, this is absolutely perfect for that. As my dad said at the time when I was given this as a Christmas present, 
if you're going to model a British Rail layout in the late 1980s, you need a Class 47. Actually, I've just remembered my mistake. This wasn't a Christmas present. It was actually a birthday present, my birthday 2019. So there you go. Oh, just over a year ago is when I was gifted this as a present. So there you go. Now, next up, we have a trio of locomotives that I picked up on the same day. I was feeling saucy, apparently. As I've mentioned before, I may have mentioned this a couple of times, my favourite locomotive of all time is the Class 50 diesel. And for as long as I had already been collecting and deciding to model in N-Gage, Dapol had announced that they were bringing an updated Class 50 model to N-Gage. They had announced their updated Class 50 before I got my Class 33 in February 2018. And a year and a half later, there still wasn't any sign of it. And then, when I was on holiday in Penzance, after filming my Class 57 Night Riviera episode of Another Station Another Mile, I got a message from my dad saying that a model railway shop round the corner from us had them in. The shop in particular is called Kent Garden Railways, another independent store, support independent as much as you can, of course. And before I even went home, I went straight into Kent Garden Railways and said, I would like not one of the brand new Dapol Class 50s. I, I, I want two of them. Now, you may be thinking, why did you not just pick up one? Why did you have two? Well, I had to have the Network Southeast version because that would fit perfectly in my 80s setting. But this version in what was called British Rail Large Logo, because the British Rail logo is really large on it. But BR Large Logo was first introduced as delivery in the early 1980s and just kept going through to the end of British Rail in 1994 and the end of this class by the end of 1992. This is a livery that would also fit on my layout and it's a livery I also like, so why not? Why not just have one model of your favorite logo of all time when you can have two? My bank account kind of disagreed with me that day but here we are. Especially as those wasn't the only two locos I picked up that day. I also decided to pick up a third one because my bank account already hated me by the end of that day. Why not just really compound it? As I was, you know, just looking around after I, you know, was paying for my 50s, I suddenly saw this, a Graham Farish Class 57. Not only is the Class 57 the locomotive that hauls the Night Riviera down to Penzance and back to London, and indeed the day that I got this, had just brought me back from Penzance to London on the Night Riviera. But this model is the GWR liveried Tintagel Castle 57603, the exact locomotive that hauled the Night Riviera train that I went down to Penzance on and made my film about. So once I'd come back, finding a model of the very loco that hauled me down there I kind of had to have it. It did sort of present a conundrum at the time because as you can tell most of my locos are kind of from the 80s period. Now this one's very much modern day. That kind of caused a bit of an issue. And I thought, hang on a minute, given that I like both the 1980s era of British Railways and some parts of modern railway stuff, and I probably want to represent both, how about a dual time period for my layout? How about it can jump seamlessly from the late 80s to the late 2010s, so now. There you go, there's my reason that I can run that. I mean, maybe not at the same time as those, if those locos show up in the modern day time period, maybe they're running a heritage operation or a rail tour or something. I'll, I'll think about that later. There's one very important rule above all else that you have to remember about model railways, and it is simply known as rule one. Rule one is that ultimately a layout is your layout. If you want to run something on it, you do whatever the damn hell you want because it's your layout, your rules, you decide what runs on it, you decide what it looks like, you decide what to put on it. It's kind of like Bob Ross's attitude towards painting. If you want a mountain in your painting, you put one there. If you don't, you don't. If you want a, a, a modern day locomotive to run on your layout because you really like it, but your layout's technically set in the 1930s. Who cares? It's your layout, you do whatever the heck you want with it. Although I may have also invented a second rule, which is the life on Mars rule. As in, there's a variable explanation why your layout can jump 20 to 30 years in terms of time periods. Another great thing to remember when you're building model railways is that there's basically a prototype, i.e. a real world example, for anything you can think of on your layout. And those of you who watched the very first episode of Another Station, Another Mile, will remember that the Northern City Line in London, bearing in mind that we filmed that episode back in 2018, still had Network Southeast signs all across all those stations underground, on the underground section of that line. So Network Southeast first came in in 1986, 2018 still had all the signs up. So there you go. There's my prototype for my layout, suddenly jumping to the present day, but still having signs on it and, and branding and stuff from the 1980s. They just 
didn't get around to changing it yet. So with all of that in mind, I decided, ah, do you know what? Modern locomotives are good to go as well. I don't just have to buy 1980 stuff. So the Class 57 kind of kicked the door down to open up a dual time period dynamic. And I figured, well, if I'm gonna be modeling some modern image, modern era type stuff, I need the loco that is so common on British railways nowadays that even if you don't pay attention to trains that go past you when you're waiting for your train to work in the morning or whatever, I guarantee you, you will have seen one of these. This is the Class 66. And this is a Graham Farish model of such, and it's very nice. Most of them were shot in this red and yellow EWS livery. And technically, even though EWS as a company hasn't existed in over 10 years, maybe longer, most of the locos, they've just never bothered repainting. They're just like, yep, yeah, it's a nice livery. We'll just leave it on, why not? This is absolutely perfect for the modern era. If I want to run any freight, in the modern time period of my layout, then uh, no, I have to have one of these. It's a rule. Christmas 2019, I got this as a Christmas present. So once again, thanks mom and dad, you, you're very lovely. And this year, before everything went into lockdown and we suddenly realized we don't quite have as much disposable income as we thought we had, I decided to pick up a few more locos, including this really nice Dapol model. This is a class 68. And this is probably my favorite current generation locomotive on British Railways right now because I think it looks great. In real life, they sound really good. Oh, and finally, they're also named after warships. So a lot of them share names with old class of locomotives, including the Class 50, which is really awesome. And then the last two are both two locomotives that I love very much, but I didn't up until now have any models of them. Now, cast your mind back to the episode of Another Station Another Mile on the Wherry Lines, and more specifically, the East Anglia short set. What was that made up of? Three coaches and two Class 37 locomotives. Fun fact, they are kind of baby Class 50s. They have, I want to say, a smaller version of the same engine. They make a similar sort of epic, rumbly, thunderous noise, which is, just sounds like Brian May got angry and plugged in his guitar on maximum settings and then just hit the first chord to tie your mother down out of nowhere. <laughs> That's what a Class 37 sounds like to me. But, unfortunately, I kind of ummed and ahed about having Class 37s as part of my fleet, because I'm like, would it really fit? Like, if I'm modeling the Wherry Line set that I remember, I'd need to get the right coaches, and they're kind of hard to find, and even 37s in the specific liveries that I remember, they were kind of hard to find. And then, in a Facebook group that I'm in, I found this for sale. The Graham Farish Class 37 model, in the direct rail services livery, the exact livery I remember from the East Anglia short set. This started out life as 37409 Lord Hinton, but its previous owner renumbered and renamed it to 37423 Spirit of the Lakes. And he also did a nice bit of weathering on it as well to make it look a bit more duller and a bit more like it's kind of done some hard work in its time, you know? And it's a 37 in the direct rail services livery that I remember from the East Anglia short set. In fact, this very loco would have worked the short set IRL. So, I've, I've got my class 37 now, except that the East Anglia short set had, had two of them, one at each end. And I was kind of like, well, do you know, I've got one now, I kind of need another. The way I ended up getting my second class 37 was, was part of a, 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 a big box, uh, part of a sort of train pack gift set sort of thing. And um, it's a bit big. <laughs> this is the Avro Vulcan XH558 Spirit of Great Britain set that honors two icons of British engineering, which is the Avro Vulcan jet fighter plane, bomber plane, and the Class 37. A couple of years ago, Direct Rail Services put one of their Class 37s into the old British Rail large logo livery that you saw on one of the 50s earlier, and renamed it from 37424 to 37558, so they could name it Avro Vulcan XH558. Do you see what I did there? As much as I was only buying this pack, this entire pack for the one loco, the rest of the pack is also very cool. Let me just show it to you. This has now become an unboxing video, by the way. There we go, and have a look at that. And so what we've got here are not one, but two model Vulcan bomber planes, which have their own like little stands that they can go on. Airframe identification kit uh, plate replica thing there. There's a depot plate down in the bottom right, bottom left, I should say. And there's a load of other things like sort of original pilot training manual, well, 
reproductions of original uh, RAF training manuals for pilots flying the Vulcan. And of course, the most important bit, for me anyway, there's the model. There's the locomotive in the bottom right, there it is. The rest of it's very cool. It's a very cool little set. The main thing I was after though is the locomotive itself and that looks awesome. And the best part is, I know for a fact that 37 Five 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 eight four two four ran on the Wary Lines short set, and it's in a very cool, very unique retro livery and renamed. So it's all very cool. And um, yeah, that's my entire collection. That's my fleet so far. That's my squadron of locomotives ready to be unleashed onto the the tracks of a layout that I build. I just need to get around to actually building the layout now. I am waiting for the extension kit part of this uh, baseboard kit set to arrive. As soon as that happens. I'll start building the baseboards and who knows, track might be going down by the time we come to episode two. I'm aiming for these videos to maybe be about once a month. I'll basically just film bits and bobs when I'm working on uh, the layout or running locos. Some videos will just be running sessions. Other videos will be specific like, oh, today I'm working on this and stuff like that. Hopefully you guys enjoy that. I'm gonna be struggling to film real trains uh, for the next few months. So I thought the next best thing would be to film very small toy trains because this is what they basically are. You know, they're collectible models and things like that, but, but let's be honest, I'm going to be playing with toy trains, and I'm very excited about that. So, I hope you guys enjoy this video and uh, subsequent episodes to come. In the meantime, I hope you guys are doing well and staying safe out there, and um, I'll see you guys soon. I'm off to play trains.